so my meeting is being recorded okay yeah yeah uh, uh so i had this old laptop it was like really old 10 years maybe i'm not really sure so the good thing with linux is it runs on anything so at that time i had windows vista i guess on running on that uh, Yeah, yeah, Vista is a very bad operating system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, it was like it was like it uh, used to like really uh, use a lot of uh, like RAM or resources like, and yeah, resources stuff, and like yeah. yeah, yeah. I couldn't do anything, so I found out like how can I how can I make my computer faster? And then Linux showed up, so I like researched into it and then downloaded Ubuntu. Then I went on to Debian, and lastly I used uh, Arch. So that's how I went. Yeah. Down. So does everyone end up in Arch Linux? Like every Linux enthusiast who are into yeah. rising and stuff. I like. mean, according to what I've like, seen, I, I myself I use Arch, and then yeah, I just seen, like, end up there, are, I guess. Yeah, people are quite comfortable with Ubuntu and Debian, but then people who like really want to like go minimalistic because their computer doesn't support using Ubuntu or Debian, like minded, I had to go to Arch, and then Gen two. So. Kind of force. I had to force myself into it. I'm all for elementary is a very good looking OS, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is Pop OS. Uh, so the thing about me was that it it was pretty much the same. Uh, I just wanted something uh, to run on my old laptop, and you know, Windows was too resource intensive. So I started experimenting, and then Ubuntu, and I I started with Mint, I think. the mint it's was like pretty popular back then right, yeah. right. it was like very yeah, popular back then. then like like everyone <laughs> ended up with arch yeah yeah i had this one uh, time in like when i was trying to like i was like that i was distro hopping so this one time i never knew about arch or like how to like partition your drive so i just basically just uh, uh, put in uh, arch arch's iso onto a usb stick and i boot from it and it's like complete black screen With the terminal on, and I never used to like never used terminals before, so I was like really horrified. No, that too bad. Yeah. No, I I had my experience with terminals. I uh, I started off with the command prompt, but it was like yeah. not much of use. I was just making directories and random files and stuff. One thing I miss in Windows terminal is the lack of a good text editor inside the terminal. Yes, 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 yes. You don't have that. You have to use notebook. Comes as like the basic. Uh, yeah, text, but uh, you uh, you need the GUI, right? Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> once that uh, my computer crashed, and then I got just a terminal prompt from yeah. Windows to fix up the, and uh, see the issue, and then I was trying to uh, change something in the registry, but there was no such. Yeah. yeah. I was re- really missing the Nano and Vim vibe. Yeah. Let's uh, let's move to the next slide, I guess. Uh, yeah. As I said, yeah, it's yeah. no at all. <laughs> But yeah, it's open source and customizable and stuff. That's what. Actually, I I had this question: How much of open source is it really? Like they ship with proprietary drivers, I guess. No, that's only if you use like things that require proprietary drivers, right? So if you use, if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, right, you'd need a proprietary driver for it because NVIDIA is like they're like bad people. They don't want to open up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the open source ones are really bad for NVIDIA. But then on the other hand, you have Vulkan drivers for AMD and stuff, right? Yeah, the Radeon ones and all those. Yeah, 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 they are yeah, just yeah. great. Some people say that they work better than the proprietary drivers that AMD provide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? it's true. Because because uh, like Vulkan is like uh, maintained by the community. The community has better developers than they have at AMD, I guess. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so like uh, to attain a more sustainable and stability, I guess they have included those proprietary drivers too. So it's still better, I think. Like ninety-nine percent open source is still better than zero percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you if you, you, can actually, you can actually choose to like use proprietary drivers, but then yeah, if, yeah, it, yeah. if you're using Linux, you can actually choose not to use any of the proprietary things. Just use free software and nothing else. 
it becomes a completely free and open space software. That way. Yeah, of course. But but then uh, some systems, I guess, they have issues with non-proprietary drivers and yeah, stuff. Yeah, 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 they do. Yeah. Like uh, if I say of myself uh, in my Dell Inspiron laptop, I still do not have support for the the finger touch and all those stuff, uh, and the fingerprint sensor also. Right, right, right. So I don't. I, if you don't have the drivers inside. Yeah, the, yeah. They they don't make those free open source stuff on yeah. those drivers. Yeah. Your next slide. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's move on. First thing to get cover basics and structure. Yeah. So uh, we're gonna learn. Sir, we we mentioned in the slide that uh, Linux is pretty much customizable to the core. Uh, so, anyone who customizes his windows, I guess, is it there anyone? Okay. Do any of you customize your uh, windows? windows. Okay. Uh, in the chat box, everyone can write, I guess. I guess uh, it's only up to the wallpaper and the themes. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, not much of options they got. Yeah. What type of customization? Uh, usually on Windows, uh, you can actually customize. It's hard to customize because it takes update every yeah, that's to Windows updates. What's and the core? Uh, so, what's meant by customizing a Linux operating system? We mean by uh, like basically... customizing every aspect of it from yeah, the yeah. low level driver stuff and hard the we're hardware compatibility. Yeah, yeah. We're going to talk about yeah, like yeah. window managers and desktop environments later on, but you can use whatever you want. You can use, you can use a completely GUI based. Uh, uh, you can also it, install a TUI text based interface yeah, or just yeah, use yeah. a terminal, whatever. Like, or say you don't like, uh, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. If you say some, you have something like Ubuntu, which is like really uh, very graphical, right? So you can have something simple with like using i3, yeah, which yeah. is the tiling window manager and all, and just use the terminal. And you can, there are apps inside the terminal that like help you do many of the daily activities, like reading your mm -hmm. mail or going through Twitter, maybe. Who knows? Yeah, we'll be coming to that. Uh, yeah. Let's let's move on to the next slide. Again. And to the core, it's later on, but you can also like customize the kernel that runs every. Yeah, yeah. Uh, very basics. Yeah, yeah. So let us come to the shells now. So the shell is an important part of the Linux environment, I guess, the workflow and all those yeah, stuff. As you, yeah, as you see, the uh, shell is basically what helps you communicate. The user communicates through the shell directly and indirectly to the kernel, which is like the uh, like base Linux kernel, which like communicates to the hardware. Okay, the kernel communicates to the hardware and help, basically helps you communicate to the hardware. It's like a software layer. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I guess most of the like seventy percent or eighty percent of Windows users do not need to use the command line or the PowerShell that Windows provide. I guess, but more than uh, seventy percent of Linux users do need to use the shell, and they use it like very often. Yeah, I we use the Windows Close Minimizer. <laughs> yeah. So let us go to the various types of shell. Yeah, so there are different shells you can use. It. As I said, it's customized. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you can even customize which shell you use. You yeah, want I guess ev everyone is comfortable with Bash. Those yeah, two are it's only it's compliant system. and everything and all. It's right. a go to shell yeah, for the right. default, by default. You install Linux, you have Bash. Yeah. Yeah, and then there's other ones which you can install later on. Previously, the they used to have the SH shell, I guess. Yeah, just the shell. It's like just it's, it's just still shipped with Linux, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's there in the bin, bin directory and those when stuff. When I say POSIX compliant, POSIX compliance basically means uh, it's basically a set of rules that the IEEE community had set so that you write a shell script or you write a program on Linux and it runs anywhere. Okay, so bash is a POSIX compliant shell. Uh, so if you write a shell script, 
for bash it's going to run any linux operating system that has bash so okay. yeah completely independent of what's underlying yeah so shell is just posix compliant but bash is posix compliance but more functions with it okay yeah, it's it's more like an extension yeah yeah it's an extension to the shell and then and we have uh so, so say you don't write a posix yeah, yeah. compliant the script bash might run hmm. yes moving on to the next slide There's fish now. Fish, fish yeah, yeah. Exactly. I I have heard about content. fish a lot, but yeah, yeah. Uh, never really but tried it. it. It's a joke shell. Uh, it's not a joke shell. People can use it, but uh, it's like uh, it's like it's like you running Python under like you using Python to communicate to the uh, uh, Linux operating system, like using IPython console. You use fish, which is basically yeah. it doesn't usually. It's not POSIX compliant. You you. See, in in if you're writing a POSIX compliant script, you're writing uh, say an if statement. In if statement, it ends with fi. You end an if statement with fi in uh, a pass script. But in fish, you end it with just the word end. And in put end is not a reserved word in a POSIX POSIX compliant. So it's not POSIX compliant. You run a fish. Uh, they 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 are more into the the aesthetic stuff and yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the looks and feel and ease to use. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fish is basically yeah. You have those. You have syntax, syntax highlighting, and then tabs and all of that. It Tab looks, completion and very, very colorful. Yeah, it it's looks, very colorful. Very colorful, very helpful. So say if you uh, say you're, uh, you if you know what flags are when you're writing a command, say uh, ls, which lists all of the files in a directory. Sometimes you yes, put yes. a dash and you uh, put uh, the a and uh, yeah, a those e extension e flags. Extent, yeah, or extra so, information yeah, modification yeah. stuff. So if you don't know what uh, flags you can use, you can press dash and then tab, and then uh, fish is yeah, just yeah. going to give you a list it's of just what we're gonna you list you. flags that you can use and what it does. It it increases the workflow speed because yeah. uh, you don't need to go to the man pages and take references, and yeah. just gives you the basics. I'd say just use bash and use the man pages, but fish is good. Which is, uh, I guess, it's pretty doable and good. Yeah. Moving on. There's Z test. Z test. Yes. Now, so as I said, there's shell, there's bash, and now there's Z test. So the more extended version. Yeah, yeah. You you can run a uh, non-posit compliant script here. Yeah, doesn't doesn't matter. I guess I'm not really sure. Uh, it's it's somewhere like it's not as colorful and show offy as yeah. fish, yeah. But and it, uh, it it has some more external and useful extensions other than that that those provided by Bash. Yes. And it also has tab completion, I guess. Yeah. 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 Tab fish, right? Uh, moving on, I guess there's not much to say about shells. Yeah. Then there is, I think. Uh, so uh, before moving on, someone has asked in the chat that uh, what is the difference between shell and fish? I, I just said uh, shell is basic POSIX compliant. You can just run uh, POSIX compliant scripts or like uh, like not use functions or something like that. Okay, but then bash, I guess you can use. I'm not really sure, but bash you can run non POSIX compliant scripts and maybe functions. I guess Ashpere will be able to tell you about this. Uh, the more uh, overview and uh, the concept of having a shell is to have something to interact with. Yeah. And uh, shell, which was called uh, shell by the way, the default sh, yeah. uh, it has a more basic interface and it it was very basic in nature. Uh, and with bash comes a more of extended nature, a few more features that you can use, and jsh increases upon that. It, it keeps on going like that. Some are POSIX compliant and some functionalities are not. But I guess uh, Bash, Bash is an improvement, we can say, yeah, on, on top of Shell. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so IPython console is uh, basically using Python as your yeah, shell. Yeah. Yeah, so. You can run Python as your uh, 
run your operating system using python yeah uh, when i switched i didn't actually switch uh, from bash to ipython i just have a different terminal which is uh, set up with ipython and i sometimes use it uh, when i need to run certain tasks because i'm more familiar with the python syntax and the workflow so it helps a lot yeah and uh, when the concept was introduced to me that python can be used as your default daily drive shell i was like how can that be <laughs> yeah <laughs> but it turned out pretty well and yeah yeah it it also has those uh, built in commands and all the path variable tools and all those yeah, stuff yeah basically python yes. python is easy right you can like write yeah yeah tips and all and then they have extended a bit of the python stuff with magic words and all those stuff extra stuff I to agree. help out yeah, yeah. okay anyway. let's move on then move on shell scripts yeah. yeah one of the interesting things uh, so uh, sorry uh, for the interruption here yeah, yeah. uh, so talking about shell scripts so uh, it actually helps you with day to day life say uh, you are programming and then you uh, say you are building on the c++ app what do you do you go gcc and then you build a object file right and say you're not only building the object file say you want to turn it into a ino file which runs on a arduino right you say you're writing arduino is uh, c okay so now every time you're turning uh, a c a c file to ino file and now you have to turn it into an object file first so every time this happens you're building you create an object file so if you're using a shell script you can write you can actually give in a command to like rm that object file so it doesn't like keep building upon in your directory so think small yeah, yeah. things yeah. like that like in mm-hmm. in more of a layman's term i would say that um, they help with your customization automation stuff yeah 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 see so you start all those with, stuff yeah they you switch on your uh, see you log into your uh, user account and you want some things to run uh, on like on startup so you can use that using a shell script yeah or you can uh, make a big pile of commands and just shink it into a shell script and yeah 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 they link That's, it with one command yeah yeah so a uh, good thing that uh, linux has like a uh, bash scripting has if you can use pipes so you run a command then then you can pipe in the output to another command and you just can keep piping uh, the commands to different commands till you like get to get what you want basically so yeah you can even use it for web scraping like the piping yeah. is that the powerful it's like sometimes you need those shell scripts yeah. like yeah. it make, makes the life so easy it, it can be compared to uh, some default python programs i guess like you also use python programs to do some like web searches and yeah web searches and all yeah, yeah, yeah. For, for for web searches on all you need to actually import modules and like download them yeah yeah yeah, yeah but in uh, a linux shell wget is already there right? mm. so you can download the web page or like curl the web page and get what you want from there or in case of setups i think they also use the shell scripts like you are setting up a new server or something like that yeah. so, and huh. you don't want to run through all of the computer so you just provide a script and they just run it they get what they want linux is like uh, say uh, you you heard about live usb right so yes 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 the live usb it into a usb and just slap it on to a laptop and it just yeah. run so with shell scripts what you can do is say you have a Say you have an Ubuntu live CD, you slap it into. Uh, see, you don't want to use your laptop. You don't want to carry your laptop everywhere. It's he- heavy, maybe. So, and you're going to some place which already has computers there. So, what you do, you create a live USB. You go there, and then uh, now beforehand, you create a script that actually uh, downloads whatever you like, like runs and installs so whatever you want. Like you want, say, Python installed onto your. Uh, Linux operating system. You write a script that installs it on like boot and all things like that. Yeah. So that you don't have to carry your laptop anywhere. So you can write actually yeah. installation scripts. So people in the Arch Linux community, what they do is when uh, since it's like lots of commands to like uh, actually install the operating system, they write a script. Because they don't want to write the commands each and every time, so yeah, yeah, it's, it's gonna waste a lot of time for a lot of people. Yeah, 
and like with this open it yeah m- much like the hacker mindset like yeah, if yeah, one yeah. has already done it why should i do it again yeah, I do it. yeah. so i guess we can move on yeah yeah so some uh, basic tools and commands there's ls which lists the files in a direct files and folders in a direct uh acha one thing i was very curious to find out uh, uh-huh. when i started with linux i thought that these commands are built into bash but then i discovered that no they are are they are different and they are stored as executable binary yes, files yes yes yes, yes, yes. Uh, there's the file structure that you have they're all stored in the bin directory you can actually bin as bin the user local bin and anyway stuff yeah so uh, what happens it, it must be in the path variable to yeah, get yeah, the must be in the path variable bash looks up these uh, commands in the path variable and runs it from there so you can have a, like your own script over there say like uh, get this which gets something from somewhere and then you write a script that like uses get this and bash this knows it's where it is yeah using i think that that alias comes default the ls with color the alias yeah is, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah that you comes with not, default i guess I default guess. bash configuration i guess it's pre written in the bash yeah, yeah yeah i just pipe everything through lolcat <laughs> and which makes the whole terminal colorful yeah Mm, let let us discuss one second. Uh, Avina, okay, yeah. Uh, so, let us just see what those basic commands do. The ls mm. command list. Uh, can you correlate the file structure of Linux with Windows? Like the different directories and Windows have different folders and stuff. Right. Uh, Windows. Uh, Windows has a program files. I'm not really sure. I'm not really looked into Windows, but. It has some some similarities. What have whoa? Okay, so oh, it has oh, yeah. it has some similarities. Like you have a users directory, yeah, yeah. which uh, Linux also has. Uh, the bin directory, I'm not really sure what's there, but no, uh, they they have the system system thirty two oh, right, or right, something system like that. System thirty two, right, right, right. They have that. System thirty two is where all the execute executables are stored, and uh, if you're installing something on Linux, it's stored where I'm not really sure. bin directory only i guess when we are installing something on linux it's not exactly stored somewhere ah, yeah, it's yeah. like spread out it, it yeah, each it's application has its config yeah. files yeah 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 and, it has its own uh, th- there is always a sim link or some kind of link to the bin file or the the alternatives like as bin yeah, and all that stuff you can on windows you can choose where it, you can install it like on like the program files for department but then again it's also spread in in windows it's spread like it has its own documents folder yeah yeah what do, what does this command do okay let's do yeah, yeah. them one by one uh ls whoa ls is uh ls is list basically list whatever it is. lists the what's the current directory does yeah, uh, so should i should i show them yeah. in a yeah. live shell yeah. or something actually yeah can you stop presenting and then we just go give a live demo of what all of these things Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let us show them. No. Uh, am I presenting? Yeah, I can see. Yeah. Okay. Uh, starting off with the terminal. Okay. Th- this is something the NeoFetch does, but I have integrated into my Bash RC. Yeah. So, so yeah, what like he's done is like on kind of startup of the cool. Bash shell, yeah. he like he written like run this command, which is NeoFetch. Yeah. yeah. uh so ls comes first it just says what's in my directory the files in my current and, directory and uh, yeah so ls is default it doesn't have these colors but uh, you can actually alias it to like have colors yeah i yeah. i guess they have aliased it already yeah 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 that comes by default aliasing if you show your bash rc maybe they can understand what alias uh, it is very complicated okay this just would be a little spark Mm, where are the default aliasing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See over here it says yeah, yeah. CP to CP dash I, which is like overwriting things. 
confirm before you write things and then uh, if you see i ls is not there but uh, ls would be yeah, LS. Yeah, here is ls ls oh, okay yeah. ls uh, yeah ls color auto color auto so color it automatically takes the color from they have also a config file for defining colors yeah yeah you can do that too yes, so I guess that. and then my stuff i also have made some aliases like in windows i used to use yeah. that cls command oh, yeah. it was so small and the clear so command was very big so yeah. i just switched yeah some of my aliases and some key bindings and stuff mm. now the cd command to change my directory i think peter so we can change everything in Linux. Yes, we can change yeah, yeah. everything and anything in Linux, including the Linux kernel. Uh, so uh, you can actually turn it into anything that you want. You can have your own wallpaper. Yeah. yeah. The terminal that he has. You, you see, can also change the names. Yeah, yeah. His, uh, his, uh, what, what is called the uh, local host name is Ashwarya. You can change that. And uh, you can actually change the color. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I'll show them a demo. I I have a, a small script inside my bash bash RC file, and with a key binding, I can change the theme and the stuff. With, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, like that. Okay. Yeah, like that. So it hey, changes isn't, and. Isn't this isn't this looks good? Thing or looks huh? Good? Nothing. Nothing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so like you can actually change it however you like. Yeah, yeah. You can and then the PWD and the CD commands for going into different directories and listing stuff. Touch command is for the files, I guess. Yes, you can touch and then it just creates the file. Like you say touch uh, Linux.c and then it just creates the file. You can also use yes. it to uh, update the file. So whenever you create a file, it has a uh, timestamp of when it's been created. Say you want to update uh, the timestamp, time stamp, like it's created on this day and this time. But you want to update it, uh, like say it's a new day and you want to update the timestamp. You write touch Linux.c and it basically updates. Just the updates time. the timestamp. Then we also have the rm command, which I am not very fond of. It. Yeah, you just uh, delete stuff. RM, RF, slash. And it's gone. Yeah, yeah the directory, whole directory yeah, stuff. That there was this command I was very afraid of. It was yeah, that. A, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Don't Never run, run this. Don't. It will wreck your whole system. Delete everything. Yeah. And yeah, you do. Uh, you actually have you, you, inside your bash script. You have a you've configured uh, like uh, something for a lo-fi something. Lo-fi. Yeah, lo-fi. Uh, that was. Uh, mm, what was that one second? Oh, yeah, yeah the, the lo-fi like lo stuff. Uh, what it does is, uh, I have a MPV player. Uh, installed. Linux, and... system. Uh, Linux uh, natively has uh, like. It knows like you shouldn't run rm.rf, you have to run another flag with it to actually erase the system. I don't really remember that flag, but uh, it will actually. I think we can, uh, yeah, it's it's just for that video purpose, and I just go there and it runs in the background. It will actually, yeah, it will actually erase your system completely. Oh, oh, oh. That's that's too bad, I guess. And what else we do we have in the list? The cat command, I guess. Yeah, the cat command. Uh, cat command uh, basically. I have the file. Out of file, right? Yeah, prints yeah, out the contents yeah. of a file. Yeah. And the piping thing, the grape command for searching out words. I think we should I think, yeah, uh, add something out and then grab something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's just. And this is the pipe symbol. Yeah, and then and just grab out the. 
yeah, all of the document tags. Lucky wo document ki wo. Yeah, so it okay. actually finds all of the document tags and just. Yeah, we can it. also grep it into Type less. Tags, like yeah, if, if, if it was very big and we could just. Yeah, less is basically it creates a small nano editor, something like buffer, that. Buffer, I think yeah, a buffer. buffer, um, buffer. Creates a small buffer and you can like move up and down. Yeah, and other basic commands the mkdir for making a directory. Mm. They also have mkdir in uh, command prompt, I guess. Uh, yeah, yeah, they do have it in command prompt. Yes, yes. that's a new directory. And to remove that, we have to use the RF flag. Yes, because it's a directory. Yeah, of course. So that uh, sums up the basic commands. Yeah. And the one thing I was talking about is that the drop down shell that, that runs mm -hmm. Python. I, I think the background picture makes it a bit less it's visible, fine. but it, it, it also has those bindings like LS and CD stuff and all this. Can you run like uh, Python commands here? Like yeah, yeah. They they have a uh, Python commands. Yes, like print anything. Control L to clear. I'm not really sure. Control L to clear. No, that that does not work here. Okay. I think you have to type here. I guess that's what you Yeah, yeah. Uh, we can import stuff like. Right into the I don't know if it's in, in installed or import OS stuff. Oh, okay. OS or those those stuff like the normal Python stuff. I I used to do like uh, small uh, machine learning scripts inside this thing. Nice. Once I had those pandas and all those libraries installed. That's actually nice. Like if you if you like learning how to like machine like if you learn yes, yes. just like write it onto a script. Yeah, there, there is also a reason for like using this because uh, my Jupyter notebook was not working because of some bug. Whenever I tried to use the tab completion, the whole thing crashed. So I had to yeah. kind of force into IPython console to do my stuff. Yeah. Okay. So let's move on to the presentation, I guess. Mm. You are been off present. Yeah, yeah. Stop the presentation. Yeah, yeah. Stop. Uh, I'll just share. No problem. Okay, okay. Uh, it stopped. I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Uh, yes, continue from there. Yeah, yeah. From the package managers. Let's start from here. I have something to say about this. So Windows doesn't have any package managers, right? You're they have the now something is coming with Windows 11. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. They, they are including Month something. Back they came up with WinGet, which was not good at all. Which is not good at all, but Windows 11 has a package manager, but they didn't have a package manager before this. And uh, they had to go to the website and stuff to like get the exe files. But in well, Windows one thing they did have is uh, the app store, but no one really uses that. Yeah, nobody uses it's like that. zombie land. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I the only thing I used App Store was to install the Windows subsystem Linux uh, Ubuntu distro. Yeah, That's all I used it for <laughs> App Store to install Linux. <laughs> yeah, to install Linux. <laughs> That's really yeah. Fun. So the thing with package managers are, uh, you have like different distros have their own package managers. If you're into the Debian group, you've seen App a lot. Okay. If you're in the Arch Linux uh, uh, group, which is like Manjaro, Arch, and then there are many others, uh, you've seen Pac-Man. Yum, I guess, uh, Fedora uses? I'm not really sure. Fedora uses... Uh, Yum. No, no, no. Actually, Yum is used by... Pentos, uh, I don't really let remember. Let, let, us, let us search. Yeah, anyway, so there's Yum, DNS, and Arch. Yeah. Yeah, you, if you search out, I'll by that time I'll keep talking. So yeah, 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 package yeah, yeah. manager is uh, you can maintain your, you can like basically get whatever you want. Like so, you can sudo apt anything that there is, or like anything that the community has created. 
Okay, but you can't do that with Windows because sometimes there are a few problems here and there. So, uh, yeah, the Yum is used in Red Hat Linux. Red Hat Linux, right, right, right. never used that. Uh, no, nah, Red Hat Linux is a Linux with a price. <laughs> Yeah, Linux with the price, so that you because can like, the support, support community no, support. No, not npm. That's rpm. Uh, that's rpm, not npm. They're not node. Uh, npm is node, node. I guess the, the node JS community uses. Yeah. Like like the different types of software in I mean the development environments like Python has the pip. Yeah. Those are also package managers. So the thing with Windows is you have updates, right? You have like uh, like. Update. There's like window. There's a like notification. No, the uh, thing is that you Windows is so much like there are so many security loopholes coming yeah, up every yeah. year, and like they have to make those updates. Except all of that, like the Windows updates, it takes really long. Okay, it takes extremely long, and you have to restart your computer each time. And you can't do anything. Like it also takes a lot of resources and stuff. Yeah. Updates make Windows slower and slower. Yes, yes, it does make slower and slower. And every time you update, you have to uh, reload. You have to like restart your uh, like computer or laptop, right? But what Linux says, it has a live kernel. So when you're using a package manager and you're like completely like uh, upgrading all of the apps you have inside that are upgradable, you don't have to restart unless and until you're actually like upgrading the kernel or like the Linux kernel. No, but the the old kernel is uh, still on the RAM and it it keeps on working. It keeps on working, right, right, right. So you don't actually have to restart yeah, yeah, yeah. unless you want to use the new one. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. it. And also, you can like you 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 can like update whenever you want, like after ten years, if you have a, a disk for that. Yeah, of course. Uh, but that's that's not very good. I think that's required yeah. for certain embedded. Like if if and... you yeah, embedded or like if you have a server that just like runs. And you don't want yeah, to... like we don't want to go up to a date kernel. We just want to yeah. keep on the patches and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't updated for o- over eight months. Like I haven't. You, yeah, even yeah. when I used to use, I never used to update unless and until I actually required to. No, no. So you must be on some kind of stable distro. I was when I was using stable distros. I used yeah. to. Like, I, I was so always right the now, of right now I'm using distros. Ubuntu as a subsystem, right? So I've never like usually I never never uh, ran app up update in the, like last few months. So that's that. No, we 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 tend to have a problem with the rolling releases because yeah, rolling releases have do have a problem. <laughs> you can continue about that. You have a favorite package manager among them. Like, uh, there's so the AUR package managers that I really like. The Arch Linux user repository. Yeah, yeah, user repository. The yeah, yeah, yeah was uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Then this pack AUR is like Pacman. That's that. Pacman, Pacman, I think is a bit nerdy. Like you need to know a few lot of flags and stuff Pac-Man to get stuff, started right, with. Right, right, right. App is, app, on, app is pretty clean. App get installed. App get yeah. installed. <laughs> no, you you don't even need to write the get nowadays. You just yeah, need yeah, to app, like app install. Right, right. That's yeah. Snap. The snap. Yes, is the snap. The snap. Snap is there too. Snap is. Easy. Snap. 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 I guess is more like a like, like an image system for platform independent yeah, applications. Yeah. And there's there's this joke that distro you. There's a YouTuber called Distro Tube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fan of that guy. Yeah, there's a YouTuber called Luke Smith. So they were like actually joking. Where this guy Luke Smith was ranting about like app images and stuff. Okay, and then YouTube commented, "If I ever build a Linux distribution, it's gonna build only with app images." (laughs) Then that's just app images are bad. You can't really customize them, in a sense. No, it it's not a distribution anymore. After you are like yeah. working on it for a few years, it's it's your distro. It's your distro, like it's just yeah. you. It's it's not just Ubuntu work. or Debian. It's just your distro. Yeah. Like right now, what you're using is your distro. There's yeah. Like commands there. Yeah. I I started with the base Manjaro, but then I kept on switching, switching different yeah. stuff. That's what I did with just, my Arch Linux install that I had. I like completely riced it and all, and I had different commands for different things. Yeah, nice. The Linux grows with you. It's it's like a buddy or something like that. Yeah, yeah. It yeah, grows yeah. with you. You can keep it as ever you like. Yeah. 
Uh, so moving on, I guess. Yeah, as I said, like Debian, Ubuntu, Arch space. Never use Red Hat Linux. Only if you wanna run it on a server. And if the server crashes, you wanna shout on somebody. Use Red Hat. You you got the Red Hat employees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and Call Gen them up and yeah. if you're like crazy enough to like install Gen two, I've tried, I've succeeded, but it somehow failed. Okay, like I've I've like I booted in, but then I just can't use it anymore because somehow my uh, internet drivers have failed. Okay, like my base that, internet that's, driver, that's, my Ethernet driver is not working. I I can't use it anymore. I have to go back to Arch. Yeah. Now this thing happened to me when I was trying to compile FreeBSD. Like it was a Unix-based FreeBSD. Yeah, right. Yeah. That internet stuff was very bad. A few yeah, years like, ago. Yeah, my old laptop didn't have like uh, new drivers for the Ethernet and all, like Ethernet and sound. So I had to always like after installing, I had to go and uh, like install the drivers. On and on. Yeah, 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 yeah. You you could have written a small script or something like that in a pen drive. Also, yeah, the thing about Azure is uh, Azure is uh, run by Microsoft, but Azure actually runs on Linux. That's the crazy thing about Azure. Yeah, no, the that's yeah, yeah, something yeah. like that. But in yeah. most of the cloud architecture and stuff, they all use Linux. All use Linux, right? Right. I logged into my Azure Ubuntu VM with Tormux. It was fun as a beginner. Yes, it's fun as a beginner. Tor- Tormux, Tormux is a fun thing. Uh, we used to play with it when, like, I I still play with Tormux. It's it's really fun. Nothing bad with Tormux. Yeah, it. it People also rise termux. Like I also rise my termux. Yeah, I, I yeah. didn't rise termux. I used uh, I I used I used to watch a lot of Luke Smith videos. I used to watch a lot of Luke Smith videos. So what happened was he used to talk about this uh, set of softwares called suckless softwares. Okay, ST and uh, like suckless softwares had a terminal called ST, which is what which officially was named the simple terminal, but it was actually called suckless terminal because it was like a, it didn't have any bloatware or anything. Yeah, it sucked like, less. <laughs> yeah, it sucked yeah. less basically. Bash is a bit bloated because like it has all of these features, but then uh, ST was good. ST with a dash, which is a different version of Bash. But somehow people stuck to Bash, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bash is easy. Bash is there. Bash runs everywhere. Hmm. Uh, the main difference between Debian and Ubuntu, I, I guess they uh, Ubuntu branched out from Debian. Yeah, Ubuntu branched out from and Debian. Just set up Ubuntu. their other repositories. There's not much of a difference, I guess. Yes. Just yes. different repositories and the environments yeah. and default settings. So, as we're going on to the next slide, you'll see that uh, Debian and Ubuntu is actually. Uh, uh, they're like pretty stable close. releases. Like, they're pretty close, and they're like stable releases. You don't. It's not. They have these things called the long time support. Uh, LTS, uh, LTS kernels, LTS and they just keep on going on those LTS. Yeah, stuff. they like they support it for like many, many, many years, and then like it's not ten years. Like, LTS yeah. for ten years. Ten years, yeah. like ten years. So, and then they don't have like the cutting edge software, but things like Arch Linux and Gen2, if you write upgrade, it's just going to give you the like cutting edge. And it's it, in a sense, it's bad because uh, if you're having cutting edge, you like get in the beta program and those yeah, things yeah. might have like small loopholes and then you can actually, which can actually- no, but, but, then, but then you need those uh, rolling release really software to test, test out all yeah. those stuff. If you, because if if, yeah. if people do not use rolling releases, we will never have the next stable release. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like, if you're if you're into like running and like so solving problems, we can use a. Yeah, rolling. yeah. I, I myself uh, love upgrading my Linux and yeah, yeah. like two times in a row, uh, it wrecked my system and I had to boot in from another live's USB to fix it up. It only the, happened to uh, me once. I don't. Rem- I don't know why it happened. I just up. No, it it just literally happens like every f- every few weeks to me. To me, it like I wreck my system and then I had to fix it up. I used to use it a lot of like I've used Arch Linux for a very long time, but it never really happened to me. I don't know why. It just happened once. Like it wouldn't boot up. Anymore. Nah, the I, the main problem was I think uh, the two main problems I faced with Arch Linux was. One was that they had certain hook builds and those configurations were missing. So the group would not upgrade. 
and the new linux system images would not be stored inside the group configuration so uh -huh, right. it fail to load the kernel ah uh, yeah i get that that was that one issue yeah. and the second issue was that uh, that you know the gcc compiler does not compile GCC, static yeah it doesn't compile it doesn't compile static so <laughs> it was like uh, like yeah. what what's wrong yeah and arch doesn't have stuff like here so you, you can so i had to it. set up docker and then use yeah, debian yeah, inside yeah. docker yeah that that's one way of doing it or you can just basically get what you can do as gen you can get the gen2 turbo and then use the no gen2 i, I try it with gen2 but uh, the 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 third stage turbo yeah the yeah, i, I tried with the yeah. third stage turbo but there was some linkage issues and stuff like that so it didn't really work out for me yeah. so i had to do that debian thing but gen2 does have a static library yeah yeah, yeah. The Gen two is like the next level for the Arc users. Yeah, yeah. Gen two is like, it's like drops you and like do. Arc Arc used to have that build from scratch thing, but then yeah. Manjaro and all those stuff came and uh -huh. made it Gen mainstream. Gen two does. Gen two actually does have that. It, it, nobody knows. I, even I forgot. But there are distros based on Gen two that. Yeah, but they they are more of like the underdog thing. They are not very yeah, yeah, much. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I guess moving on then. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, that's stable distros and then they're loading the releases. Uh, yeah, you live on the bleeding edge and yeah. get the latest versions of everything, including the bugs, the latest bugs. Okay, wait. Sandeep yeah. Pera says I used Ubuntu until my college starts using Turbo C plus plus in undergraduate. Ubuntu was awesome and it has everything I need. Turbo C plus plus. Don't use Turbo C plus plus. Nah, use GCC, GCC. Yeah. Yeah. GCC Turbo C plus plus has like really old uh, libraries, like really old libraries. Yeah, GCC. yeah. The company is not again there. Yeah. I think. The company. They, that was uh, certain. Turbo C was uh, proprietary, I guess, before. I mean, it, you you can't uh, install it on Linux. I guess you can only install it on Windows. It's proprietary. Yes. It's there are way arounds and stuff. Doesn't really. Why do you have to like? Anything run on Linux? Come yeah, on. GCC yeah. runs on Linux. What else do? You... Yeah. <laughs> or just use online uh, GDB. Yeah. 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 That's that's, that's also uh, alternative. Yeah. So I guess moving on there. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You. you yeah. 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 Topic. Favorite topic. One of the favorite. Our favorite. Topics favorite topic. Yeah. 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 Because I've do I've not experienced for like a very long time. I'm using Windows now. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll tackle it then. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, desktop environment and the window manager. What is a window manager? It's it's like uh, you seen those uh, how the window pops up and displays stuff. That's the issue of the window manager. The floating windows, resizing of windows, managing multiple in windows. That's all the window manager does and. Like by the Unix philosophy, it does what it does very well. Yeah. Desktop environment is more like a, a cluster of softwares. It includes a window manager, includes a theming software, a panel, Docker, and the doc. Sorry, not the Docker, the doc and panel and stuff. So like yeah, on like on on your Windows install when you boot up onto like a Windows operating system, you have what boots up and like welcomes you is a desktop environment, right? And yeah, then, it starts with the Windows Explorer, Explorer.exe, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's the desktop environment, and then you have a window manager, like something that basically uh, opens up the application in a box, and then you can resize it using your mouse. And yeah, I think the window manager also provides the the minimization key and the cross yeah, key. Yeah, yeah. And they are global for all the applications. The style of those keys. In and... Windows, yeah, yes. Yeah. Uh, desktop environment is kind of blotty. It's easier to use, but it's kind of slow, blotty. Yeah. Window manager super fast. Like uh, in Windows, you have like one win one desktop environment. You can't really change it. But on Linux, you have like many many other desktop environments you can use. You can use GNOME, KDE, yeah, whatever yeah. you want. You, you yes, yeah, some that. some someone was saying that uh, Windows would switch their lit anti kernel to Linux and thus become a desktop. <laughs> desktop environment. They should actually do that. No, no, they will never do that because uh, if they change their kernel, 
all the software writers have to write for that new kernel, yeah, the yeah. Linux kernel. Actually, and then why would anyone use Linux? Hey, why would anyone use Windows? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They use it for the NT kernel because most of the software writers write it for the NT kernel. Yeah. The Linux kernel has changed a lot, but the NT kernel is like still the NT. That's so yeah, short sto uh, long story short, uh, the window manager will just manage your windows and desktop environment will give you the panels and stuff and the extra blockware or useful stuff, whatever you call it. Uh, let's move on. Uh, so yeah. yeah, so talking about the Linux structure and like how everything is structured and like how it works basically so you have user applications and compilers like say you open a firefox as a user application but how does it actually uh, talk to the hardware uh, so what it does it talks to the shell i want this the shell talks to the kernel the user wants this uh, the kernel is more like the the drivers are the lowest i think yeah, like the they kernel. directly interface the kernel along with the hardware stuff they do right the kernel is more of like uh, the load balancer and like they allocate resources. Yeah, yeah, it's like that. It's so the kernel is like that's where that is. That's what this is. You guys can talk. Like, we both want it, and uh, the kernel is like two applications want the same resource, and kernel is like, okay, that's let right. us divide the time. I'll yeah. just allot you to different times. And yeah, basically, it's like a manager. Uh, I think the Linux uh, stack is pretty simple. Like it has a kernel shell and the applications, compilers, services, and stuff. Like run on them, right? Uh, we can make it complicated. For example, the Android structures, they are pretty complicated. That's pretty complicated, right? That's yeah, different. They like just different, like, system, you know? No, they, they stack, they use uh, the Linux kernel and huh. the libraries and the compiler. But then and along with the libraries, they have a SQL database which stores information about the applications. Okay. And then there is the Dalvik virtual machine. Oh, okay. <laughs> which runs the, uh, which containerizes each of the Java applications. That's too much. Okay. <laughs> and on top of the system applications in Java, uh -huh. then they have the applications like written by the users and installed by the users, the normal applications. Like, Okay, like more four layers on top of the Linux structure. <laughs> yeah, man, that's that's kind of bloated, honestly. But yeah, Android, <laughs> yeah. Is Android. <laughs> Android is Android. Yeah. Android somehow runs fast. Yeah, uh, that is the difference. I think uh, if we can move on to the native stuff, uh, Android it lags a bit, like because they use that Dalvik virtual machine. Yeah, yeah. It lags a bit, but. Then you know you have the portability, like you don't have to compile all the apps. Yeah, that's just using shift from e device e to e device. Yeah. yeah. The Dalvik is the thing that needs to be compiled natively. Yeah. So moving uh, on to yeah, no no, would you mind about those directories like why is uh, S bin there and bin there? Why are they different? So S bin is like system binary files that like are there like for the system. I'm not really sure. I've not really looked into this, but I'm no, I have I, also and, and yeah, yeah, one thing I remember. Like binaries you can like it's like you created these binaries, you can store them like it's the root folder binary. Yeah, so yeah, you, the, you the system wide system, system wide binaries. Yeah, yeah so then like, you have the bin yeah. folder in your local user groups and inside your home also, I think, in the local. So usually what happens in a Linux, so like say you're, uh, you're a system administrator and you have different uh, users using your own system. So what you do is you have some scripts that you write, right? So you can store them in the binary, in the bin folder. But then there are some system binary uh, binaries that you do, you haven't write, but it comes with the Linux install. And you should never mess with it. That is stored in the system binaries. Yeah, like the init, init, init binary, init binary. Yeah, yeah. init binary is right. right. Uh, so I, I want to show something, I guess, if if I have the okay, privilege to yeah, share my yeah. screen. I think it will be pretty nice. I can show them. Uh, the 
yeah 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 here is that system in it has been in it right right it it's it is it, it is a mother process of every process yeah it's pid 0 right yeah it's it's the pid pid 1 pid 1 or oh, shit like pid 1 pid 0 must be the init rfs or something like that well, i'm not really sure but i guess uh, pid it, 1 it should be pid 0 or 1 uh, who cares? PID the one. Kernel, 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 the kernel zero. Doesn't matter. I, who knows? I'm, I'm not sure. It's like the kernel. I'm not yeah. into kernel stuff. So anyway, so in it is the first. Yeah, it, uh, it, it's the thing first thing that runs. And then and then we have software. the system D. System D is a blotware. Everyone talks. Yeah. I system don't know. D, don't use system D. Use what was the other thing? Open RC, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or even that those free from stuff. Yeah. Of yeah. you can share now. Yeah. Mm, see uh, about going on to etc and all. You have etc basically stores all of the config files. So you say you have uh, yeah. this. Um, yeah, it basically stores all of the config files. So you have an application. When you run an application, it looks for a config file. Your default config files are stored in etc. So you can actually say, okay, uh, an app, this is where my home directory is, the browser I use, and all of that. So you can actually configure. Uh, your... We also have a temp, di temp directory for the temporary yeah. file storage. Yeah. They, yeah. they just delete everything in the temp directory after we shut down yeah. the computer. And then we also have the proc directory, which lists every process as a file. Then there's dev that basically lists all of your devices as a file too. File, yeah. yeah, yeah. Var and stores. There's. Uh, I think var stores those was... packages, the cache files and those system wide caches and packages and. Yeah. Also, in case of web servers, it has that www folder which stores the web servers. Okay, somebody. Web asked, server somebody is asking uh, the path variables. Where are they stored? Path variables are it's a variable. Not, so yeah, it, yeah, it's not exactly stored in a directory, it's stored in the current runtime. Yeah, it's actually like. stored, in, stored in the bash RC or whatever runs. Like, say you're opening a terminal em emulator, like, uh, yeah, it's it's uh, stored inside a bash variable. I can, yeah, say. yeah, yeah. So, you say you open up ST, which is a terminal emulator, Term the, the terminal emulator will, will uh, look into bash RC and yeah. then, like, see all of the configurations you have. So there's a there's gonna be a variable there called path dollar sign path, and that's gonna be equal to all of your path variable like all of the uh, bin folders wherever. You, so there's gonna be a slash bin. There's gonna be an s bin. There's gonna be user slash bin. There's gonna be a, uh, other bin folders. You know. Okay, so yeah, it's all gonna be there, and this bash rc is gonna be different for different users because user slash slash bin is gonna be different. So there's going to be home slash this slash that. What the commands to store a path variable? You go to your bash rc file and then you uh, find your bash yeah, variable yeah, yeah. and then you just give a colon and give your. Different I think I, I think we will uh, show those after the presentation is over. Yeah, yeah. In an interactive we, session. We, we, we can, we can show those stuff here. Yeah. And uh, the thing with the directories is it's not actually uh, maintained. It's not an, an actual. Uh, like very strict, strict rule it, yeah, it's strict more rule. or less the structure you see the second last thing media media wasn't there the media directory wasn't there yeah it, it, it was there. mnt i guess the yeah, mnt used to store the right. mount points yeah but now media turned into something about for removable device the yeah. uh, the cd cd is there in media I'm, cd I'm dvd sure. players and CD DVD players, I guess. Since it's really Actually, my installation does not have that media. Even, folder, my, even so my installation doesn't have the media folder. It's like it's not maintained. Like it's not like strict. Like you can't use media. You can use whatever there, but like yeah, you, you can you can the media. Just you add media. Anything, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's why it's called customizable to the core. Yeah, that's why right. you can do you can do whatever you want. Basically. Temp is, as he said, temp is where you store your uh, temporary files, which uh, delete when you reboot your system. Uh, going on, user is where you store your user files. Home is where you store your user directories. Say I create a user uh, called uh, 
Ryan, then it's gonna store into slash home slash Ryan unless and until you say that you want to store it somebody somewhere. Yeah, yeah. And then there is the root user. I think we missed yeah. the root user, the sudo command. The sudo command. Uh, the sudo command is say. Uh, it, basically, it's a command, so you have to you it, you have to have it. So sudo actually stands for super user do. Okay. So it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So what happens is you write a sudo words file where the the root user basically writes in this user can use all the all of the commands with the sudo command before it. So it you just go up and then if you don't if you if you're if you if you are a user and your name is not in the sudo words file, you can't use sudo. You can't you you can't run any uh, any privileged uh, any, stuff. any privileged. Stuff like say if a file is marked with the uh, uh, the root uh, if it is marked the right protect files, files and all those so you can't edit those and things like that and boot is where uh, all of the boot files are all of the grub files are basically so when you uh, when you're booting up when you press the power button uh, it looks into the boot directory for your grub config so it knows where different uh, the installations are basically different operating systems are the root uh, file system. It's been so long I've used Linux, I'm forgetting everything. Yeah, <laughs> well, it will be a refresher for you, I guess. This session yeah, yeah, yeah. it will be fun. You will remember stuff. Uh, Anyways, I guess we can move on. Move on, yeah. yeah. Okay, rising tools. You know about them more than I do. No, not not necessary. I do my share I of stuff. I stopped a year ago. I'm not really sure. I've used IETWM and DWM and like in the window management uh, and then ST and then NCMP, NCMP, CPP, MPT. Actually, nowadays there are a lot of rising stuff we can do. Yeah. Um, I'm like the base riser. Yeah. I, I'm also not much of that uh, very well-known riser or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> I so made some risings and yeah. rising for starters. Like rising the term started. Uh, it started in like Japan, where uh, Japan really loves cars, right? So yeah, car did, culture, the JDM, yeah, JDM stuff. Yeah. yeah. So what they did was they used to like completely customize their cars. If you seen Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift, uh. If the wraps and all the, those high high rides and stuff. Yeah, yeah. If you've seen the Tokyo Drift, you've seen that car that has like it's like completely customized to look like a Hulk, look like Hulk, right? So that's yeah, right. yeah, with the punches and stuff. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. Car. yeah, yeah. That's basically rising, because they thought that rising, like customizing your car with like all of these things, would make it uh, go faster. Okay. And no, break. not 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 necessarily. Well, like, like uh, the first better. thing was that uh, the 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 tail spoilers and the yeah. body kits. Yeah, they they were for previously used to modify the drag, and yeah. the yeah the aerodynamics and modify it so that the car could move fast and with less drag, yeah, and downforce right. and all those stuff. But then like uh, which made it look cool, right? Because yeah. uh, you have a spoiler, it makes your car move fast. Yeah, yeah, and they took the coolness of that, made the spoiler huge, Completely. so that it does not impact the system, and that that's rising. Like that's rising. They're basically customizing, yeah. customizing everything that you can. Uh, like you yeah, have a yeah, car, yeah. you customize everything you can. That's rising. So you have no, but company. nowadays in the car culture, they do not. Uh, I mean, they do not really support a riser because we are doing stuff that is not necessary. Yeah, it was unnecessary, right? Yeah. It's unnecessary right now for cars because it's proven that racing doesn't really help the car. But uh, yeah, I, I, like in Linux it does. Yeah, Linux is it definitely yeah. does. Yeah. yeah, it makes your uh, work uh, flow better basically because you never. And then it's much. it's not always about the workflow and all that because it looks it's good. like when you yeah <laughs> when you dress up yourself yeah 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 you you paint a painting and. No, you choose the color of your bag. That's yeah. rising too. That, that's rising. So there are different things you can use to yeah. write. So as we say, window managers. In like usually in rising, people use uh, tiling window managers. So that's I3WM and I3WM. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. But now I think uh, KD Plasma is pretty good. You know, because yeah. I'm using KD Plasma. But 
many people okay. say that I am using a tiling window manager. Huh, yeah, yeah. But, huh, but mine is KD plus. Yeah. But like from like you don't for you have to configure it to be tiling, right? Yeah, yeah. But in I three W and B W, you don't have to configure it to be tiling. It's just it just tiles because it's there in in. Its I recently tiling. recently uh, tried out Q Tile, which is a tiling window manager written in Python. Okay. And it's it's like so robust because it has all the key bindings of the I three W M. Uh huh. It also comes with an application launcher, a full screen one. with the transparent windows thing mm -hmm. and then it has all different kinds of tiling modes which you can just switch like from normal like uh, you, like you the i i3 i3 gap style huh, it has huh, also huh. has the bspw style also so the the nomad style and all all the styles are integrated so you can just switch switch this, right utile comes with this but you can actually code this into i3wm or dwm yeah but with utile you can just get started just install and get started yeah, yeah. yeah. that's good but then it runs on python they they also call it hackable because of that because anything is possible with utile yeah and it's pretty easy to do it so they call it hackable okay now coming on to terminal emulators uh, usually terminal the terminal emulators that come with your linux or system are bloated Like what comes console, like console bloated, uh, XFCE terminal kind of bloated, pretty much bloated. Uh, the Ubuntu terminal bloated, bloated. bloated. The Telix, I think the Ubuntu is a Telix. Yeah. I don't know. I've never looked into that. But yeah, it's, uh, it's bloated. Yeah. Yeah. So things that are not bloated, you like you have to actually like minimize your uh, your operating system when you're writing. So you can't use bloated software. So you're uh, using uh, terminal emulators that are not bloated and are really fast. So there's ST. There's no, they they are having a movement right now, which is called that, like, What's it rising called? on bloated stuff. <laughs> you should check it out on Reddit. <laughs> like they are the 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 bloaters are saying that why why can't we if 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 our system has the Supreme resources of running everything smoothly. Why can't we use the bloated stuff? If you just run bloated stuff, why not? You can do whatever you want, basically. Yeah, that's the okay. that's the whatever makes you happy. Whatever makes you happy. So, but usually, if you want to be like, if you want to use minimalistic things, you can use SP and yeah, that's the most common uh, approach of rising. Yeah, yeah. And then, as we talk, there are different shells there. Different shells, even, fonts. You can even use different fonts. They they also have a website called the Nerds Font or something like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. They do, they do. Right, it's fun. Yeah, which comes with the old school fonts. Uh, old did school. did you uh, did you were in the BBS stuff, the bulletin board systems? No, I don't think so. Uh, th what they used to have in the eighties is that uh, there was no internet, so you got those phone lines and modems right. that used to connect through phone phone lines. Uh -huh. And nowadays we have websites, right? Right, right. Back in those days, we had the telnet protocol. Yes, we did. And what they did was there was a software running in a computer, which was like a Synchronet or uh, those are the BBS softwares, mm -hmm. which provided you with an interface. Okay. Like uh, you can telnet and log into a computer, a remote computer, okay. Okay. which would give you the uh, the interface the. Synchronate or the BBS interface. Mm -hmm. Now the BBS would consist of a bulletin board where you can post your messages. Everyone was able to see, like a forum. Mm -hmm. And then it also has the personal chat system. Mm -hmm. You can also install DOS games, like we have online gaming. Right, right. There was DOS games on BBS sites. Mm -hmm. Like it was pretty fun. And the most important thing was, uh, since it, there was no internet, you could only dial in into your local BBS systems, like. Back in the days, uh, in in the early nineties, every high school kid was a C admin. They used to have their own BBS, <laughs> and and then then generally uh, that the Synchronet used to, I mean, since you are using a mobile phone connection, you two people cannot visit one BBS at the same time. Right. So you visit it, you leave a message for your friend, and your friend visits it, he sees it, and like that. You cannot, and they used to have time limits too. Like one user cannot play like for more than ten minutes, okay. and not more than three hours a day for total usage. Ah, yes. The early days, yeah. The only that, that was thing that I've used is IRC. You know what IRC is? 
yeah yeah I, irc irc used to be there like uh, irc was pre internet or with yeah, internet I, i guess it was pre internet i'm not sure yeah 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 it, it was like like after internet. the bbs internet. boom they had the bbs boom yeah yeah and uh, they have that arpnet or something like that before internet arpnet which connected all the networks mm-hmm. yeah, yeah and then i guess i guess i guess it was after internet and then yeah the, yeah the arpnet arpnet approach was pretty much like this like yeah 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 you want to uh, go to a computer that's in america just connect so you will start no you you have to connect through a line like yeah. you have to connect to a local network then connect to one of the computer which has a connection with that computer yeah, yeah, and you have yeah. to hop and hop and hop and follow the path then go to that okay. computer yeah it okay. was like hopping servers servers and servers mm-hmm. like we still hop servers like the dns system hop servers yeah the pcp but it's it's abstracted from us right now so what yeah we, what were we talking about right text editor so yeah uh, nano uh, new there, there's nano now there's a big fight between using vim and emacs but you can no i it. i think there is no fight at all because emacs is an interpreter no it's uh, not it's, 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 it's a ellipse ellipse uh, interpreter somebody uses emacs and then uh, like some of my friends using emacs and i'm using vim like ah, you're using vim we can't use a web browser and like i don't want to use a web browser uh, yeah <laughs> like oh, the course. vim concept is that I am a text editor, and I will be the fastest text editor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Emacs is like, uh, you have Linux, I don't care. You're going to use me only. Yeah. <laughs> But hey, you know, Emacs also has a window manager inside yeah. of Emacs. Like everything, you can actually like build your own operating system. You can install Emacs on Windows and turn it into your own like uh, thing. Yeah. <laughs> like. Yeah, like you can. You want a, to order pizza? We have it built that. in. We have a plugin for Emacs. <laughs> yeah, Emacs has plugin for everything. I think. Yeah, yeah, it's like crazy because of this, you know. And the the maker of Emacs, he is a very controversial man. No more talk about him. Let's move on to audio. Yeah, yeah. Let's move on audio. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, audio again minimalistic. No uh, VLC or Windows Media Player on all. You just use. See the thing about rising is you want to use everything through the terminal, right? So uh, what runs on the terminal and plays music is MPD or CMOS or Kava. But MPD Kava is more of an audio visualizer. It's, it does not play. Yeah. Okay, and don't know about Kava anyways. So uh, NCMPP basically is like a playlist manager and visualizer that uses MPD. So you run the MP. It's like a server. You run the MPD server. Yeah, it's a local server, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then NCM PCP connects to it, and then you can use uh, through NCM PCP to like play the songs that you want. So basically, NCM PCP sends a request to the server that play this song and plays it. Yeah, it, it's pretty fun. CMOS is also fun, I think. CMOS and, is also pretty fun. Yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's, then, it's just provides you like a midnight commander like interface. Yeah, yeah, and Rangers I think even even run yeah. Spotify using CMOS. I'm not really sure. Mm, I, 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 I think they have a backend or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and video, you can video use, MPV. Yeah, it's like MPV. Okay. Play anything, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, like what Ashwarya had when he opened up his terminal, with that is system info. Use NeoFetch. You can also use CleanFetch. There's the something called PicoFetch, which is gaining importance right now. Check that out, Pico Fetch. Okay. No, it's like Neo Fetch but minimalist. <laughs> okay. <laughs> minimalist Neo Fetch. Yeah. Okay. Mail. I, um, I don't really use mail clients. Yeah. That so, much. uh, what happened was I was going through videos of Rick Smith, and then he was like, "Use part. It's you can use you can use email on you can like write email and like view email on your terminal." And I was like, "Wow, I don't even have to log into my browser anymore." <laughs> So, browser obsolete yeah we browser. we also have uh, wm3 and stuff yeah yeah w3m yeah, yeah. w3m uh, links yeah so mutt is like old like like vim is old we have new vim which is old, like new and colorful so ne- use new mutt uh, basically what you have to do is you have to uh, set up a config file for new mutt where you uh, say this is your smtp server and all of that and these are the ports you use this is my email address this is my password 
and it uh, connects to the server email server and then you can do whatever you do in a like, yeah yeah it is pretty fun you can do email now uh, i suddenly remembered a history about grep grep right and like uh, you want computer file like the youtube channel computer file yeah computer file yeah, right, right. they were discussing how uh, came up with the grep the what was his name ken thompson yeah okay it's like uh, if any interviewer asks you what is your weakness or what is the only weakness you have or something like that, uh-huh. just tell him that uh, the my only drawback is that i am not ken thompson <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Vim came from VI, I think. Yeah, Vim came from VI. Vim is better. It's like a better VI. Uh, Emacs is not a terminal based thing. That yeah, that's a yeah. Uh, Emacs. You can run on the terminal. You can, but Emacs is its own thing. Emacs is yeah. it's a text editor default, but you can one run. one no nowadays they also have risings and. Or oh, Emacs only, Emacs risers. Yeah, I I use one of the Emacs distributions. Emacs also has distributions. Emacs and distribution. one of them is called Doom Emacs. Oh, I'll, yeah, I'll show you. Oh, yeah, Emacs Doom, right? Right, I've heard about. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. It 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 has the Vim like key bindings and Vim like key bindings like yeah, it's like evil. Yeah, the the stuff missing from Emacs has been yeah. included with Doom Emacs. Basically, if you have Doom Emacs, you don't need anything else. I don't even need Linux now. I just like, use Emacs. Like just Linux need the kernel. Yeah, yeah, the kernel. Someday yeah. Emacs will come with a Emacs kernel. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Linux option. The Ellipses kernel is running underneath Linux. Yeah, yeah it's that's crazy. Just crazy. Okay, I guess there are uh, moving on. I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's the last just move slide. On. Yeah. So why should you use Linux if it's not really apparent right now? Uh, Linux is free. You don't need an activation fee. You don't need to buy it. So if you see the good thing about Linux is say you you really like a laptop, right? You really like a laptop, but like really expensive. What do you do? You look for the same laptop, but you look at look like you put in Linux with it, like that laptop. In, with Linux installed or nothing installed, okay, it's like that. So you'll get it for a lower price. So that's yeah, yeah. The, the, the DOS variants, I think. The the DOS yeah, variants. The DOS variants, right? You'll get it for a lesser price. Yeah, you know, three or five k. Sometimes the price even drops to five k. Yeah, I've yeah, yeah. That. Big. And you can customize it as you like. You can download any application that uh, any uh, work. You can uh, download any application that any user has made anywhere. Yeah, and uh, it runs on literally anything. You can run it on a on an embedded device too. If you want. Acha, uh, em, from embedded device, I remembered about the uh, RT patch. You familiar with the RT patch? No, I'm not. I've not done embedded as much. I just know it runs on. Embedded. No, no, it it not technically that much of embedded, but it's related to embedded. The Okay. There is the RTOS operating system, the real-time yeah, operating right. system. Right, right, right. So what Linux tried to do was, uh, like, uh, a, a bit powerful microcontrollers and uh, stuff mm-hmm. that can uh, support the Linux kernel. They had that RT patch, which is called the real-time patch, uh, which just removes any type of uh, bounding latency. Okay. Like, okay. which makes your response times very fast. Okay. It's not very hard coded real time, but it works. Like if you are doing some audio synthesis or like audio stuff, you can always uh, switch to the RT, RT, and you will get uh, a very low latency on your inputs. Nice. Good thing about RT is I've heard you can do things asynchronously on ports. So that's nice. no RT is actually a best way to start with ARM development. Yeah, that's true. Like if you if you Because, have an ESP thirty two, just do RTOS. Yeah, yeah, Th- that configures everything. But yeah. yeah, developing ARM without RTOS is an achievement. Yeah. So, And yeah. then the hmm. community is awesome. If you ever used Arch or Ubuntu, you there's if you search anything like this is an error. I don't know what to do. There's somebody that has an answer for you. 
Yes, the Stack Overflow is overflowing with Linux. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Stack Overflow it has like answers to anything yeah. that you ever face. If you even if you like have uh, like and like a really niche error, you're gonna find an answer to it somewhere. Like on some mailing list, even you find an answer to it. But you'll find an yeah, answer yeah. somewhere. You have to like really, really search. Also, if it's stable, if you want it, it's not stable. If and you want it. It, the IRC is also pretty active. They also have yeah. the yeah. forums and stuff. It's, it's, also, it's, yeah, the internet actually mostly runs on Linux. I'm not really sure it runs on Cisco iOS, but on Linux too. Eighty percent servers are Linux. Yeah, yeah. You can do it. Yeah, and Slackware it, started commercializing Linux. I think Slackware. It did. Why? It it was the first Linux based. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Slackware, I guess, was the first commercial. I'm not like don't know about Slackware or ever read about Red Hat like completely. Uh, Red Hat, or what they do is the you have heard about Fedora, right? Right, right, right. So what they do is uh, they push stuff in Fedora. Fedora is like their beta testing or platform testing okay, free distro. And in case of Red Hat Linux, you have to pay for fixing up, you know, your stable system and fixing up okay. bugs and okay. official support and all those stuff. The software is free, of course. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't force you to update. Ever. All of these things is actually talked about. If you're not using Linux, try it out. Nobody's forcing you. But do try it out. It's nice. Yeah, but one thing is that once you get into the niche part of Linux, you cannot like you cannot that erase Linux from your life. Yeah, yeah. Once yeah you it, it will always stick up to you. Now, once you like get used to Linux, you'll always like use Linux. Like what I do, I, I have a Windows operating system, but whenever I develop something or I am writing code, I always go to my subsystem and then I use my like I, I use I, I develop there because it's easier because I package managing and all of it is easier over there. So uh, like, somebody uh, says it's secure too because of the community always there to help. Yes, it's very secure. Linux is like very very secure. Yeah. yeah. Now, the most most secure would be the BSD operating systems. But then Linux is better. Linux is pretty secure. Yeah. You don't need to run an antivirus. Yeah. Window is bloating, and uh, then the antivirus bloats it more. I mean, I mean, yeah. Like, if if, if you have an antivirus software uh, on your Windows operating system, why do you have an like? Why do you have it? It like like, like takes fifty percent or like twenty five percent of all of your resources that you have. So please delete your antivirus software and like like. If you're downloading things from uh, unsolicited websites, please don't. Uh, there are uh, many GitHub. Uh, anyway, GitHub. anyway, people mostly disable their antivirus because of game piracy. This uh, does not work with it. That's there, but if if you wanna, if, like this is not really serious. But there are many GitHub pages that have like uh, links to uh, websites. Mm, yes. Yeah. So if it's blocked somewhere, just go to the GitHub page, and you'll get actual good torrents from there. Okay, moving on. Yeah, I guess we are it's pretty much wrapped up here. Yeah, just that's all we talked about: the shells and the shell scripting, the various commands, Linux in general, and then about rising. Basically. Now, if you guys have any doubts, you can like throw it at us, and we'll try to answer it to the best of our ability. And then we'll have an. Uh, like, I like, think you can speak in voice now. Yeah, they can. They can ask in voice. And I guess if you like start like your own presentation with slides. Oh, okay. Here is nobody. Nobody has doubts. Who knows? Does anybody have doubts? Anybody has any questions on how to start up? Resources maybe. I think we are pretty much wrapping. Yeah, I guess we're done then. Okay, thank you. Yeah. We're having a follow-up session. Yeah, we'll be having a follow-up. Yeah.
we can talk about the uh, more in depth of the kernel stuff yeah this is that's, that's good for them the nitty gritty details yeah so i guess we're done i guess yeah. you can turn off the uh, presentation now okay Uh, so are we going to edit here? Yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, okay, great. Thank you all for joining. Yeah, thanks everyone. So it's pretty much done.